America. Just the name conjures up images, doesn't it? Baseball, apple pie, oversized foam fingers, and maybe a touch of bewildered head scratching. Let's be honest, America, you're a bit of a walking, talking paradox. You're the land of opportunity and crippling student debt. You gave us Hollywood and reality TV. You're a nation built on freedom and a fervent love for regulations about what you can and can't do with a garden gnome. But hey, that's what makes you interesting. You're a glorious, messy, confusing experiment in democracy and deep fried everything, and we wouldn't have you any other way. So buckle up, folks, as we take a deep dive into the funny, the dark, and the downright bizarre side of America. Let's start with the obvious, shall we? Americans love food, like really love food. And not just any food, food that's been battered, deep fried, and served with a side of, well, more deep fried things. We're talking deep fried butter, deep fried Oreos, deep fried, deep fried, you get the picture. Is it healthy? Debatable. Is it delicious? Probably. Is it excessive? Oh, absolutely. But hey, moderation is for communists, right? At least, that's what someone in line for a heart attack inducing burger probably told themselves. In America, more is always more, especially when it comes to calories. Speaking of excess, let's talk about American television. It's a landscape filled with endless possibilities, where the boundaries of creativity and absurdity are constantly being pushed, specifically the bizarre and often terrifying world of reality TV. This genre has taken the concept of entertainment to new, often bewildering heights, from talent shows where no one seems to have any talent, where the auditions are more about the spectacle of failure than the discovery of the next big star, to dating shows where the contestants are more likely to find a restraining order than true love, where drama and conflict are the main attractions, American reality TV is a genre unto itself. It's a unique blend of unscripted chaos and carefully edited narratives designed to keep viewers hooked. It's a world where people air their dirty laundry and their even dirtier secrets for the entertainment of millions. The more outrageous the behavior, the higher the ratings. It's a world where the line between reality and carefully constructed narrative is blurrier than the vision of someone who just ate a whole stick of deep fried butter. Producers craft storylines that blur the lines between fact and fiction, creating a hyper reality that is both fascinating and disturbing. It's a world that America seems to absolutely love. The allure of reality TV lies in its unpredictability and the raw, unfiltered glimpse it offers into the lives of others. Maybe it's a form of escapism. In a world filled with real-life challenges and stresses, reality TV offers a temporary escape into a world where the problems are not our own. Maybe it's a reflection of our own deepest, darkest desires. These shows often tap into the voyeuristic tendencies we all have, allowing us to explore the extremes of human behavior from the safety of our living rooms. Or maybe we just like watching people make fools of themselves. There's a certain satisfaction in seeing others navigate the pitfalls and absurdities of life, often making the same mistakes we fear making ourselves. Whatever the reason, American reality TV is a guilty pleasure that we just can't seem to quit. It's a phenomenon that continues to evolve, reflecting and shaping the culture in ways that are both profound and perplexing. Whether we love it or hate it, reality TV is here to stay, a mirror held up to the quirks and contradictions of American life. Section 4. From Founding Fathers to Founding Fast Food Chains America loves its history. From the cobblestone streets of colonial towns to the grand monuments in Washington, D.C., our past is a tapestry of stories that have shaped who we are today. We revere our founding fathers, those powdered wig-wearing, quill-wielding revolutionaries who fought for freedom and independence. These men, with their grand visions and eloquent speeches, laid the foundation for a nation built on the ideals of liberty, justice, and the pursuit of happiness. We celebrate their wisdom, their courage, and their love of fast food. Yes, you heard that right. While they may not have had drive throughs or delivery apps, the Founding Fathers were no strangers to the importance of a good meal. Okay, maybe not that last one, but imagine if they did. Picture George Washington pulling up to a colonial drive through 
or Thomas Jefferson debating the merits of a cheeseburger. It's a humorous thought, but it underscores a deeper truth. But hey, even revolutionaries need to eat, right? Food has always been a central part of our social fabric, from the grand feasts of the past to the quick bites of today. It's a way to bring people together, to share stories, and to build community. And what's more American than building a nation on the principles of liberty and then immediately turning around and creating a system where you can get a burger and fries delivered to your doorstep at 3 a.m.? It's the American way. Convenience, innovation, and a touch of indulgence. These are the hallmarks of our culinary evolution. From the Boston Tea Party to the invention of the drive through America has always been a nation that knows what it wants and isn't afraid to go after it. Whether it's throwing tea into the harbor to protest taxation or creating a fast food empire that spans the globe, our history is marked by bold actions and a relentless pursuit of our desires. Even if what it wants is a 12-piece bucket of fried chicken, fast food has become a symbol of American culture, representing both our ingenuity and our love for a quick, satisfying meal. So next time you bite into that burger or savor those fries, remember, you're part of a long tradition of Americans who know exactly what they want and aren't afraid to get it. Section 5. The American Dream, more like a shared nap on a cross-country bus ride. The American Dream. It's a concept as ingrained in the national psyche as apple pie and, well, you know the rest. The idea that anyone, regardless of their background, can achieve success through hard work and determination. It's a beautiful idea, really. It's just not always entirely accurate. The reality is, the American dream is often more like a cross-country bus ride. It's long, it's uncomfortable, and you're crammed in with a bunch of strangers, all vying for the same limited resources. Some people are lucky enough to snag a window seat and enjoy the view. Others are stuck in the back next to the bathroom, wondering where it all went wrong. And let's be honest, the air conditioning is always broken. Section 6. They wrote in the Constitution? America's founding document, the Constitution, is a revered piece of writing. It's filled with lofty ideals, eloquent language, and some really weird stuff. Seriously, have you actually read this thing? It's like a treasure trove of brilliant ideas mixed with some head-scratching oddities. It's like it was written by a group of geniuses who also happen to be really into conspiracy theories and obscure legal loopholes. Imagine a room full of the brightest minds of the 18th century, all trying to outdo each other with their knowledge and wit. Don't get me wrong, the Constitution is an incredible document. It has stood the test of time and has been the foundation of American democracy for over two centuries. It's just that some parts of it are, let's just say, open to interpretation. And by open to interpretation, I mean could be used to justify pretty much anything if you squint at it hard enough. Take, for example, the Necessary and Proper Clause. What does Necessary and Proper even mean? It's like a blank check for the government to do whatever it wants, which, let's be honest, is probably why it's still relevant today. Everyone from politicians to activists can find something in the Constitution to support their cause. It's like a legal Rorschach test that everyone can project their own beliefs onto. One person sees a guarantee of individual freedoms, another sees a mandate for government control. What could be more American than that? The beauty of the Constitution is that it can be interpreted in so many different ways. It's a living document that evolves with the times, reflecting the changing values and beliefs of the American people. So the next time you hear someone quoting the Constitution, remember that they're just one of many voices in a long and ongoing conversation. And that's what makes the Constitution so special. It's not just a set of rules. It's a reflection of who we are as a nation. A nation that values freedom, debate, and the pursuit of a more perfect union. And that, my friends, is something worth celebrating.